Hey, welcome, welcome. Where does the dirty water go after you flush it down the toilet, right? Gets collected by the sewers, taken to some place, and it's gone forever, right? Well, today I went to that place. I went to the wastewater treatment today. I spent part of the day with the water reclamation superintendent, and he was kind enough to give me a step-by-step -step process of how wastewater is treated and the role of the water reclamation facility. And I want to share that with you. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's get this video. Woo! is made up of uh, the lifts, sanitary lift stations in town and the water reclamation facility. Um, we just went through kind of a branding change. So, so we're trying to get away from sewage plant. We're water reclamation. I help with the administrative purchasing, um, research on new equipment. I guess the way I kind of look at it is I try and help the operators be successful in their day-to-day -day work. We are the wastewater provider for all the neighboring communities, including West Fargo, um, part of Horace actually sends us their flow, their wastewater, uh, hardwood, and all the other, there's a lot of other small communities. We're building a brand new plant, wastewater treatment plant, inside the fence here, alongside the old one. We're doubling the capacity of the, treat, the, the treatment capacity. Um, so we're going from 17 to like 34 million gallons per day. So we call them operators, uh, the guys that are that, that actually are, um, are in the day-to-day -day operation of the plant. So we have two groups here. We have the plant operators and we have lift station operators. I mean, the guys that work in the plant, they're here all day. The guys that work on the lift stations, we have uh, 60, 68 lift stations. It's just the constant monitoring of them. Uh, you know, if things go wrong, you know, you have limits on different performance parameters of all these lift stations. and let's say a pump doesn't kick on or a water level gets too high, um, we get alarms and, uh, and the guys, um, they, they can react to that. They can go to that specific list station when that alarm comes in. You know, we're a very flat town and you have gravity pipe. Gravity goes, you know, pipe goes downhill in order to make gravity. Well, essentially you're gonna get deep enough in the ground where you can't flow via gravity anymore. So a lift station is a mechanical, it's a pump, where we'll, we'll just simply pump that water back up to a different elevation so we can use gravity again. So it's just downhill, pump, downhill, pump, and it, it's how we get all the water back to the plant. So the state of North Dakota and almost every state, they issue licenses to water treatment and wastewater. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's kind of like based on the size of your town most of the operators here have tech, have tech degrees, two-year degrees. And we have guys that don't have any uh, formal secondary education. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, there's definitely still a technical side to it that, um, so I have an engineering degree, but, but um, you know, I manage 22 people now. And I'd say that the, the human management side of things was probably my biggest, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like the biggest curveball. When I grab the door handle in the morning, I, I have no idea what's waiting for me. We could have had a, a bad night on the lift stations, a stack of bills like this that I have to uh, do these uh, billing codes for. The variety, there, 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 there's, an, there's, an, there's a lot of variety. And if we were to put it strictly back into the Red River, I mean, we would destroy the Red River, especially just downstream of Fargo. Uh, so we mimic a natural reaction with this entire plant and we we just take out all those pollutants and then we return it back into the Red River. We've been working with a professor from NDSU, Dr. Wei Lin, he was in the civil engineering department and we've been given samples, they've been testing it for COVID for the entire last year. The code that, that makes up the coronavirus, they can measure it in wastewater. Different parts of the country, they were actually looking for like when new drugs would show up in the communities in the wastewater. The first step in wastewater treatment is that we're trying to remove all the inorganic material. So that would be sand, rocks, um, all the flushable wipes that aren't flushable. Um, you know, anything uh, inorganic. The bar screen that all the water goes through, 
and it's a simply is what I said it's it's like one inch wide bars and it's supposed to it's gonna collect trash so this is the second stage so there's gonna be another bar screen that tries to grab all the trash that doesn't get caught by those big bars Brit chamber it's called and it's a uh, it's like the bottom of an ice cream cone. It's a big round bowl with a flat bottom in it. And uh, the, the point is that you get to a, uh, you, you create this situation where gravity will simply pull all that grit, rocks like this that may make it into the system. All the human activity, you know, human waste and industrial waste. Now that's all kind of like, it's been, it's all in suspension now. So it's like, it's either dissolved or if it's, uh, Know, tiny little particles of stuff right so now they come into a clarifier and a clarifier is just a, a, a big settling tank where the water gets introduced in the very middle and you create a condition where it's extremely calm like the water's very slow and there again the whole idea is that gravity is going to pull anything down that has any mass to it. All the sludge, anything with mass will settle to the bottom of the, of the tank and then the water will just simply get drawn off the top and it goes on to the next stage of treatment. So the stuff, uh, everything that collects at the bottom of the clarifier we call sludge, that gets pumped to a different location in the plant. It's an anaerobic digester and what it means is that it's a giant tank and it's sealed. Anaerobic means without oxygen and uh, we heat it, we heat the tank to like 98 to 100 degrees because what that does, the water and the sludge that's in it, is that that allows a certain family of bacteria to live. They like it warm. And, but this bacteria will eat all the stuff. The bacteria just sits there and eats everything. And it turns it, it makes it very inert. It just removes all the nasty bacterias and stuff that you don't want in the river. As things decompose, biogas gets created. And we actually, in the winter, we actually use some of that biogas to heat our buildings too. The mixing process, and, and you, know, you can tell like, this is how dry it gets. You know, just, I mean, look, look at how it transforms. Yeah. From this end to this end. And then it gets, and then it gets put into the, these belt presses that squeezes the water out. All the water that gets decanted off the primary clarifiers, they come into our BOD. The next stop is the BOD trickling filter. The bacteria will grow and live inside all the grooves of, of this media. And the water will be, it's a, it's, it looks exactly like a pivot point irrigator that you might see in a farm field. And it sprays water uh, from the primary clarifiers. It's, it sprays it on onto the media and then the water just kind of percolates and kind of makes its way through all these, but the bacteria will just, you know, it'll, some water will splash on this bacteria and then the bacteria will be like, oh, lunch is here. And, and then again, the water just kind of matriculates itself through the media. It goes to the next stage of the treatment. The bacteria is like already there. It, it, like we just have to keep it alive. The water that comes out of here goes into the intermediate clarifier that really serves the same purpose as the primary. So it goes clarifier, filter, clarifier, filter, clarifier, disinfection, the river. So this, this water has gone through both filters, BOD and nitrification. Nitrifiers take, uh, they, they take out ammonia. It goes one more step, uh, we give it a suntan. Those get turned on and they emit ultraviolet light and they're, they're at an angle and it's all about the you know contact time in the water ultraviolet light it messes with uh, it'll it'll mess with the dna of bacteria and like viruses if anything left and it's mainly we're going after e coli it maybe has a lifespan of like a couple hours back to you know a cell of bacteria or uh, e coli um, and what it does is that it, it doesn't allow it to replicate reproduce Personally, like, you know, I've been in this job for three and a half years and it's been a really good change for me. Kind of, you know, 
change could be good.